Good afternoon, St. Croix. This is Jessica Parker White. I'm the education coordinator at the Caribbean Museum Center for the Arts, that's CMC Arts, out in Frederickstead. And today is February the 16th, 2022. And I'm super excited because uh, this is our second one of the series for this year, Exploring Art Career Pathways. And today we have Debbie Sun on the line with us um, on our Zoom here with the students of St. Croix to tell us a little bit more about textile art and how to become an artist that works with uh, textiles as well as owning a small business. Um, and Debbie's an amazing artist and one of her many claims to fame, if you will, is that she is the creator of our now beautiful VI mattress material. I know it's the hot new thing in town. Everyone's looking for that material, Debbie. So uh, welcome to the Zoom and thank you so much for taking your time today to uh, tell the students a little bit more about your profession. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here. And I'm excited too, because I love textile design. And every time I talk about it, you can hear the passion in my voice. So I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to share that with you all. Uh, so as you mentioned, I'm Debbie Sun and I am a St. Croix artist and textile designer. Um, I'm from St. Croix. I've spent most of my life here on island. The only few times that I left island was to continue my education. And then I always came back home. And I'm gonna switch it over to a slideshow just to give you an idea of some of the work that I do. So my focus for textile design is that I first paint on silk. So this is the art part of the process. And I use my artwork to then create repeat patterns that are printed onto fabrics digitally. And I know that's a lot. So <laughs> I will be breaking it down as we go on with the presentation. But here's an idea of what I mean when it talks when I talk about textile designs and creating patterns that start with my artwork and then continue on as a, as a repeat pattern. And as you also mentioned, I am the designer. Oh, actually, I'm going to go backtrack to this just to give you an idea of the process. So I have the silk painting that I did originally. I turned it into a pattern, and then it gets printed onto fabric and then made into colorful merchandise like leggings and rash guards. So the next slide is just the, the proud moment of the unveiling of the official US Virgin Islands Madras. And so today I want to talk a bit about that as well and this the whole design process and how we came up with the concept. And my thought is I'll break it down into three parts. So I'll talk about textile design, talk about the VI Madras and how we came how it came about, and then also talk about my art journey because it wasn't a straight path. I zigzagged along the way and I find it interesting and I think it, it really adds to my art and my experiences. And I definitely encourage questions along the way um, in, in each part as well. At the end, I'll ask if there's any questions about what I just talked about. So here's kind of an overview of the work that I do. And this is just getting into textile design. And my first thought is, I don't know if you can see me. Is that, is, is, are you able to see me as well when I have the slideshow? So right this moment, we're not able to see okay. you. We're just seeing the slide right this moment in time. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll switch back and forth just so you can remember who's speaking. And I feel like I'm speaking to you all as well as so I have an audience. Uh, but for textile design, you know, oftentimes that's what I say, I'm a designer and people have this like look on their face trying to figure out, well, what is a textile designer? I don't, I don't quite know what you do, but everybody experiences design on their clothing. So if you look down at your, your what you're wearing today, you could see maybe there's stripes on mine, you know, I have this little zigzag pattern. That is textile design. Somewhere, someone is on the computer creating a pattern that gets woven or printed onto fabric. And you will start noticing, you know, wherever you look on everything that you have, those are all designs that someone created. Now, the process may be different. Mine is starting with silk painting, but others will do it from straight on the computer or many different inspirations. And then not to confuse textile design with textile art. So textile art is using textiles as part of your artwork. And so that's where you'll see fabrics being used or yarn or, or, or gold threads. And then you create artwork from that. And then the textile design is more of like the graphic design part of creating prints for fabric. So I'm gonna switch back to my slideshow. This gives you the overview of the kind of work that I do. And as you can tell, it's very colorful. I'm inspired by the colors in the Caribbean. And you can use textile prints on so many different items. I have wall art, pillows, 
um, pouches, scarves. This is many different ways that you can see textile designs appear. And let's see, I have to admit that I'm still new to this whole Zoom lessons, <laughs> Zoom sessions and, and slideshows, but this is a repeat pattern. And I bring this up because what I focus on is I create the artwork for the designs and then I create a repeat pattern. And what that means is that there's no, you can't tell where it stops and where it ends, it's seamless. So if you look on the left side of the slideshow, that's the block, that's the actual original repeat pattern. And then when you look at it on the right side, you see it repeated many times, but you can't quite tell unless you look really hard where it stops and where it ends. And that's called a seamless pattern. And then I'm gonna talk about the process. So this, this digital printer that you're seeing right here, and I'm gonna backtrack, just go back and forth. So, you know, I do all this work first by painting by hand. Then what I do is I take a high res photo. I take a, a picture of my art, artwork. I put that on the computer and now it's a digital file. And then on the computer is what I start working with all the designs. Um, and then I send that digital file off to a company that will print the fabric. So when I say print, this is the printer that you're, they're using when they print fabric digitally. You know, we're used to inkjet printers um, and we have something on our computer and we use the inkjet printer to go right onto the paper. This is the same process, except they actually use big bolts of fabric that goes straight into this big machine, and then it prints directly onto fabric. And what's really cool is that you can actually print on all types of fabric, on cotton, velvet, silk, um, stretchy material like lycra for bathing suits. The, the opportunities are endless. And I feel like I'm just talking, talking, talking. So are there any questions at this point? Am I any confusion yet? Okay. Ladies, do you have any questions? Again, feel free to unmute yourself or you can put it in the text message. Um, again, Debbie's already shown us so much already about textile <laughs> art. I was excited to see and hear what you were talking about, the fact that um, you can print on so many different things. Because I was thinking to myself, I'm wondering if they're putting those bolts of material. I figure the cotton, yes, but you're telling me even velvet, they can push velvet through that machine to print on it? Absolutely, and they're doing recycled canvas, and they're up. I mean, it's it's amazing, and and really, it's a, a fairly new technology. So it's opened up a different market. And in the past, um, silk screen printing was how people would do textile designs, and they still do. But that's using specific colors, and you can probably have up until like eight or ten different colors. And so that's limited to the range of colors. With these new full color digital. Um, printing machines, the dye sublimation printing is actually what it's called. They can do full color. And so the range is, is, is endless and the opportunities are so exciting. And so I'm going to go on to the next step. Debbie, actually, you, keep... have, you do have another question here. Uh, so okay. Marina, again, Marina, feel free, you can unmute yourself. But if you're having um, if you're having tech problems, I don't mind reading out your questions. A good question. Marina is curious about what company you're using to print your designs. I'm guessing there's only probably a handful of these. Um, or so there they're actually, from? that's a very, very, very good question. And it started off where there were a few companies doing it, but now the technology is caught on and people actually have a lot more printers available to them. There are many to choose from. Um, for fabric, one of the more popular ones and it's based here in the United States is spoonflower.com. And I mean, it's the spoonflower. I can actually um, write it in the, in the chat message when I move back into the other screen. And you upload your digital image and they have a range of fabrics that you can print it on. You can order it by the yard. You can get small swatches. So it's a lot of possibilities with that. Um, and this is something ask, that, I'm guessing that you probably, before you do a bigger order, obviously you get a little test print, make sure those colors yes. are true. And you probably have a, a great relationship um, because you're probably using, I'm guessing, probably the same printers um, company. So you're going back and forth to make sure that those colors are the actual aqua blues Absolutely. that you'd like to have. Absolutely. And it does, the colors do show up differently depending on the type of fabric. So that's something that you want to test beforehand so you have an idea what the outcome would be like. And I actually like to search for many different companies and get different swatches because some companies do better for certain fabrics than other fabrics. And so it depends on the project that I have. So Spoonflower is one that I usually go to, but I also have many other resources as well, depending on what product I'm working on. 
Thank you. So I'm gonna, yeah, you're welcome. So I'm gonna show you just again, the process, because like I said, from the very beginning, oftentimes when I start talking about what I do, the, people's eyes kind of glaze over because it's hard to grasp the concept. So I'm breaking it down today, step-by-step. Step. And so this is my first step is I paint on silk. And that's just the medium that I really enjoy working with. You can do oil and acrylic or any kind of art, but with silk painting, what I love about it, I'm gonna press play here, is that the dye that I use, which is the paint, flows really beautifully onto the silk. And you'll see just how it kind of takes on a life of its own and the colors start to blend. It's a really fun process. And what you're seeing here on the, is it animated for you guys as well? On the slideshow? Yes, it is. It almost looks like watercolor paints in a way. That it is, it has, it, you can treat it like watercolor. It's very similar. And just like watercolor, if you don't want it to go somewhere, you'll put in a resist. And so what you're seeing there is I painted on those lines as a resist. And then on the one on the left, I used a, a resist called Guta, G-U-T-T-A. It comes in a tube and you draw with it just like you would a pencil. And so you're drawing the lines where you want to contain the color. And that's the way you can control it. And so here's another silk painting that I did. Fast, <laughs> a time lapse. It didn't take, it was much faster in real life. But that gives an idea of what I, how I personally start my process. And then from there, I um, put, I take a high resolution photograph of my artwork. And I mentioned that earlier. And it's important to go as high res as possible because it gives you more flexibility, especially if you want to start making large items. Say you want to print out a shower curtain. You want to make sure that what you start with is a really good, sharp, crisp image. Um, so that's another big part of my process. I paint, but then I spend hours trying to get the right image that I photograph so that I can work with that for the next step. And so here I am at the computer. <laughs> Um, I use Photoshop to work with my textile designs. Illustrator is another program that you can use to create textile designs. And Illustrator actually makes it a lot easier. They have a whole setting where you just click and choose the different settings that you want and you have a textile design repeated for you. But both programs are quite distinct. And so I'm used to Photoshop. So it's hard for me to switch to Illustrator because my mind is just working in one direction. But there are also a few other programs that do repeat patterns. And I'm going to be mentioning repeat patterns all the time. So I'm going to show you, I'm just going to break it down to like what a repeat pattern is just to get a better understanding. So, so here is a repeat. Mm -hmm. wait, if you don't mind going back, we're seeing that image and I'm just taking a guess that that's very much enlarged and you're getting really close to make sure that you are happy with all aspects of that um, piece of artwork. It looks like you zoomed in quite a bit. Yes, absolutely. And that goes back to, um, uh, I'm gonna start my video here. That goes back to taking a really good photograph so that I could zoom in and get that kind of clarity. Um, and, and you know, part of the way I work is I like to get details from my artwork and then, I, and then I reinterpret it. I use it in a different way for the textile design. So it's very important for me to, to be able to capture those moments, those details. So you're photographing, but you're not necessarily, you're not scanning it into like a scanner of some sort. No, no, I used to, and, uh, but now the cameras, the digital cameras are so much better that the, the, the better way to go is to take a, a photograph instead of a scan. Um, right now, like with a, if it's a scan, the, the images can only get as big as, I don't know, maybe a letter size of good clarity. But with a digital camera and a good one, you can get a banner size. You can get, you know, one of the, when you're driving down the freeway and you see those big billboards, you know, you can get that kind of clarity. So back to repeat patterns here, because uh, this is, I'm gonna keep coming back to this because that is, a, that is what I do. I take my artwork and then I create a pattern from my artwork. And you can create a pattern from just one image. So here you'll see the butterflies. And then all I did was repeated that butterfly going across and going down below. So you can see the grid pattern. And that's called a full drop. It's a block printing repeat. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is you can offset every other row. And just how you are laying bricks, you know how bricks are staggered going across. That's what I've done with this pattern. And it's kind of cool because now I'm showing you how it's developed so that when you start looking at your own clothing and you start looking at repeat designs, in your mind, you can 
break it down and see how it, it, it's been um, designed and how, it, how it's laid out. So another way of doing a repeat pattern is you going, you could offset it in the other direction. This is going up and down. So you can see the difference between this one, which is offset going horizontally, and this one, which is offset in vertical direction. Now, the next way of doing a repeat pattern is really fun. It completely changes the image. So take a look at the one on the right, just to kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. It's kind of funky looking and everything looks a little bit twisted. Well, what that is, is the same image four times, but each one is rotated in a different direction. So when you look at um, the one that is on the top left, you can recognize that same image on the mirror repeat. And then when you, um, Oh, actually, that's the reverse. That one is flipped. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you look at the, the image that's on the top right, that is what we started with on the mirror repeat. And then the ones below are flipped upside down. It's kind of hard to visualize, but when you start analyzing, you can see how that works. And then with the mirror repeat, if you just, you just kept repeating that over and over and over again, you have a whole different textile design. And that started with a butterfly and became something quite abstract and geometric. So as you can tell, there's, there's a lot of possibilities in how you create repeat patterns. And this is just an intro, um, you know, many classes that you can take and learning how to do it, but it gives you an idea of how you can look at the, the clothing that you're wearing and figure out how it was designed. And I'm gonna get into a little bit about how I like to work with patterns. So, so I just gave you a brief overview, but the way I like to work with patterns are the so random. Debbie, just real quick, uh, the, the girls are chatting over here and I know because you're giving us the uh, the talk, you can't probably see the chats, but uh, Marina was just saying it looks so beautiful. It looks like a kaleidoscope. And Leonice was also agreeing that that, um, that your pattern there with the butterfly flipping, it's uh, kind of reminds me at least of, um, tessellations um probably a little bit of that with the, the flipping and repeating of the patterns yeah. around yeah absolutely yeah and the outcome is so surprising and it, it totally changes the whole image but it's just using it in a different way and I, and that's partly what i like about textile design is like pushing the envelope and exploring your creative options and they're endless endless ways of being able to push further than what you think and I, i'll show you that actually because i'm here's one where um, i'm going to go back to the slideshow um, so this is just to give an idea of what a random repeat pattern is. And it's funny because it says random, but it's actually very orchestrated. It's very organized. It's not completely random. But we're going to look at the first top square on the left. And I started off with one image, the butterfly. And from that image, if you were just to cut the paper in half and flip the, 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 um, the, paper, the pieces of paper, what you're doing is you, you're, you're, you're showing how one, this is, it's, it's tricky to put it into words, which is why I have all these visuals, but you can see how with the butterfly on each of the corners, it continues off the page so that when you put those pages next to each other, the butterfly will continue. And so what I've done on the third box, the bottom uh, left, is you'll see the corners of the butterfly and then I've added yet one more butterfly in the center. And with that box and that image, when you repeat it multiple times, going across and going down below, now you have a whole other pattern that has that diagonal effect. And I do all of this digitally, but you can also do this by hand. And I'll, I'll break that down later on because that actually is going to be what our challenge is. And so I'll show you how you can do it by hand. But I wanted to give you an idea of the concept of how to set up the file um, and, and create a repeat pattern. And I, and I also like to emphasize this because when people ask about my artwork, it's not just one step. It's creating the original art, the painting, and then taking a good photo that I can use on the, on the computer. And then on the computer, I'm dissecting the artwork and rearranging all the parts and creating a pattern that can be repeated without you seeing how it uh, is connected. So it's multiple steps to get to where, to where, where I go with my designs. And 
this is an example of how I work with repeat patterns. So here's a visual silk painting I did, quite abstract. And if you look closely, you'll start to see shapes of almost like leaves and they're scattered all around this piece. So what I did is on the computer, I cut out each of the leaves, each of the sections and kept them on separate layers. And then I completely reimagined what the artwork would be like. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you, here are the separate layers that I added on top of each other. And it creates an entirely different artwork than what I started with. So for the ones who are watching now, can you see the connection between this and the previous painting? I, lo I love the videos and thank you, Debbie, for giving us so many visuals um, as you're explaining um, your process here. So yes, um, I'm hearing people in the chat saying, yes, they see what you did here. And, and thank you for giving us um, such great visual clues on, on your process here. You're welcome. And it's the easiest way to explain it because um, it is like I keep saying multiple, multiple steps to get there. So I'm gonna show you yet another process. So this is another painting I did um, of a tree and it's quite a big silk painting. Hello. And Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Y'all can hear me cause um, it's called, my microphone wasn't working. I said, um, yeah, I could see the, the similarities between them. I, oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, Thank you. Do you, have any other, <laughs> do you have any questions at all now that your phone's working again for, for being un, able to unmute yourself? No. No, not yet, okay. Okay, cool. So this one here, this is one of my favorites. And I'm showing you this, to, not only to show you my process, but how there's endless opportunities to work with from one painting. And so this silk painting turned into a different looking textile design. And what I did is I'll backtrack here. I focused on the tree trunks and the texture in the water. And on the computer, using Photoshop and using some of the special effects and filters, I created the pattern that you see on the right. And if you look closely, you'll see the tree trunks. And then you can see the water texture also, the light colors of blue and purple. And here it is on a bigger scale. Created a repeat pattern so you can't see like how that artwork stops and, and begins. And that way you can print yards and yards and yards of that design onto fabric. And then that fabric can be made into leggings for, um, or all kinds of different merchandise. And it's a cool process to start with a painting and turn it into something that you wear. Now this very same painting, I also created this image, which is called Bliss. And it's very different. But if you look closely on the right side at that design, you'll see some lines. Those are the branches. You'll see some white cutouts. Those are the leaves. So I'm gonna bring it back to the original painting. And if you look up in the tree itself and you see some of those branches and see the white parts with those little squiggly lines that look like leaves, I used all of those sections plus the water to create that design. That's really cool. <laughs> it is, isn't it? You know, and to be able to, to reinterpret, reinvent your artwork, and you can do it in so many ways. It's, it's limitless opportunities. And it, as in fact, I'll show you. So this is the second design I did from the same painting. And then I took that design, the bliss design. I added a, a photograph of the water with the rippling effects of the sunlight hitting it and the sand underneath. I turned that photograph into a, a, a repeat, a mirror repeat. Remember we talked about those butterflies looking like kaleidoscopes? So I used that technique with the photograph. And in Photoshop, you can work with different layers. I used the bliss design and underneath I had the photograph of the sand and the water and, and the whole rippling effect and came up with this rippling sand textile design. And when you look closely, you can start to see some of the elements, some of the parts. You can see the branches, you can see some of the shapes of the white cut out of the leaves. You could see the sand and the rippling effects. And that all came from the original tree 
painting. Wow, Debbie, somebody um, also wrote that, um, I think it's the next one with the with the lady with the leggings, uh, when you had that close up, it looked like endless mangrove forest, they said. Um, you know, it does, it does. Um, and I think it's that roots, and this is something why I actually painted that tree in the first place. I was amazed at how this tree, its roots found its way to the water through all of these rocks and all of these really hard surfaces. It was so determined to get to water that it broke through the surfaces and mangroves are very much like that as well. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, everything I've covered here is just like the surface of, uh, of textile design. And I'm trying to figure out how to get back to Zoom. <laughs> if I keep pushing the buttons enough times, it'll happen. Um, so, so that's textile design and there's a whole lot more to it, but I just wanted to give you a sampling and give an idea of like how to create these patterns. And I thought next I'll talk about the, the um, VI Madras and, you know, the VI Madras is also textile design, but it's very different, you know, with the uh, work that I normally do, it's full color, it's on the computer, I start off with silk painting, the Madras is plaid, you know, it's a very different way of working with material. And so it was an interesting process for me. And I'm gonna switch it to the design so you can see the official United States Virgin Islands Madras. Very exciting. So back in January of last year, 2021, the governor of the Virgin Islands, he signed the bill making this the official Virgin Islands Madras. And then in June, there was an unveiling at the uh, VI Council on the Arts and it became public and everybody was so excited as we were. But I will tell you, this is a project that we've been working on for about six years. Um, it took quite a bit of energy and uh, patience and perseverance to make this happen. A lot of teamwork. And the idea came about because Mr. Bradley Christian, and some of you may know him, he is um, the, uh, he has the group, the St. Croix Heritage Dancers, and they perform quadrille all over the island. Um, and he's really one of our cultural icons in the Virgin Islands, promoting our Virgin Islands culture and history. So Bradley was saying, Mr. Christian, that you know a lot of other islands have a, a madras that they call their own, uh, an official madras, and the Virgin Islands never had one, and it's and felt like it's it's time. In fact, many generations from before have been wanting this, and so he, me being a textile designer on island, um, he brought me on. Onto the, onto the project. They reached out to me to work on this project. Uh, we met as a committee, talked about what we wanted to do and creating a madras. And one of the things that we determined that was most important to us, well, there were two things. One is that we wanted to be sure um, it was a piece of art that stood out from what already exists. Because there's a lot of madras all around the Caribbean. So we wanted something that really says, this is a Virgin Islands madras. And we also wanted something that had personal meaning, something that we could connect to. So it wasn't just colors. It was something that was uh, more personal than that. And I will say, I, I was quite nervous uh, starting on this project because I thought, how am I to create a, a plaid design that can reflect us as people, as, as something so personal? And so my process is that I went online and I, read as many articles as I could about Madras and its history, also the Virgin Islands and its history. I, um, and I'm gonna go back to the slideshow. Um, I talked to a whole lot of people. I went through lots of photos for inspiration. I read many books um, and the talking to people that actually was the most important because, and this is something in general of life, I think, it's always important to hear different sides and for people to be able to, to broaden your perspective. Because what you think you know might be very different once you start talking to a whole lot more people. And so that was a big part of this process was just getting a feel of what people felt um, was important to them in a madras and how it relates to them personally. And in that process, um, I came up with the concept to choose different elements of our history, our environment, our culture and use the colors of those elements as, as the symbolism for our madras. Um, and, and it's interesting because there's, so the concept coming up with the concept was a big part of it and I'll go more into the colors, but I also wanna talk a little bit about the challenges. So the second challenge to this madras project is the technical part of it. How do you, how do you uh, weave fabric together? How do you create a design 
that um, can say so much and yet is how you can actually make it happen so that you can hold it in your hands. And that was something that was very new to me. I'm, you know, like I was telling you before, I'm used to printing onto, you know, uh, fabrics digitally. And then this is using a woven cotton fabric. So fortunately I had gone to a, um, a trade show a few years ago and I met a representative of a, a weaving plant in the UK. And I was able to go visit that plant uh, which was one of the best experiences ever because it was the behind the scenes and getting to know well how are, is fabric woven and i'll show you this is what was at the plant and it was eye-opening it was so fascinating to walk into this huge space and there was all this loud noises of the machines the looms were cranking out all this fabric and you know the the yarn was stretched out across the entire room so learning about how the process um worked helped me figure out how I was going to design the actual madras and in that process there were things that I had wanted to do that I realized I could not do uh, because there are some limitations in weaving a fabric but it was I'm, it's so exciting to be able to go to a plant um, and see how it's the behind the scenes how it's done any questions on that part of the process before I get into the meaning of the colors um I have a question when you went to the plant, did they have like different colors of fabric that they were printing? Very good question. They had lots of different colors. And now we ended up not using that plant because of colors. So the yarn that they had, and they had rows and rows of all different colors, but it was in the UK. It's a colder climate and they're not used to using colors that are very bright. And they just weren't bright enough to convey the, the vibrant colors of the Caribbean. And so the end, we weren't able to use them as the company to produce the fabric just for that reason. They didn't have the yarn that was the colors that we wanted, but I did get the benefit of learning how it is all produced. And so that helped me in figuring out the design process. And Thank speaking you. of colors, yes, that was a great question. So the colors, I'm gonna bring you to this page. So, you know, every single part of this Madras design is specific. It, it's it's not random in any way. Everything had is used for a particular purpose. Um, so you'll see this turquoise, and that represents the the beautiful beaches that we have. And in fact, I'm going to move to the next slide because that makes it a little easier to see the colors and the meanings. So the turquoise water waters all of the Virgin Islands have incredible beaches. There's the deep blue, and that is for St. Thomas because their ports have deep waters and so the color of the water is a deeper blue and the reason why that's important is that it's for commerce and, and that's why Shalomali is the capital is because that's the destination where people could do trade so over our history of so many hundreds of years the deep waters is what allowed us to prosper to do well because we were it was easy for us to do trade um, the pink is for the conch shell the inner side of the conch shell and that is uh, symbolic of the call to freedom in Frederickstead, where they blew the conch shell and the, and the slaves were freed. They demanded freedom and that happened. That was under the Danish rule. The yellow, you'll recognize as the yellow for the ginger Thomas, and that is our national flower for the Virgin Islands. It's also, um, our national bird is the banana keet, and that yellow is the same color on the, on the belly of the bird. So that works really well for that purpose as well. There's the green, and that's for our natural resources and, and, and um, the production of our natural resources that also helped with our prosperity. There's the red. Now, we have seven flags that has flown over the Virgin Islands, and in all seven flags, there is red. And most flags, actually, in the whole world have red in it. And it's because it, it symbolizes blood, but the blood is because there's strength in the, in the fight to protect your country, and there's love, and there's passion. So the red is, is more of about the feeling and the pride that you have for your own country. And there's little bits of white. And if you look in the, in the actual fabric itself, there are little bits of white. And that was important to include um, because Madras and some of the other islands, it was the original attire, it made its way to the other islands. But here in the Virgin Islands, the first attire that was used were uh, flower sacks, flower sacks that were bleached white. And so when you look at very old photos and the women are dressed up in their attire, it's all in white. But eventually the Madras made its way to the Virgin Islands. It became very much a part of our own history as well. 
but I felt it was important to include white. So that was an acknowledgement of our original attire. And then it continues. So you'll see there are stripes, there are four stripes. So three of those stripes are closer together and that represents three Virgin Islands. And then the fourth stripe represents our unity. And so that is the meaning of the Virgin Islands Madras. Any questions on that? Thank you so much for explaining. I, I knew all the colors um, had representation there, but thank you for giving us a little deeper understanding of the, the beautiful fabric that now represents the Virgin Islands. And is this now available? I know that sometimes we've gotten phone calls too at CMC Arts uh, for people looking for the Madras material. It is available. We've had two shipments have come in. The third one is, is I'm not sure if it's on island or if it's on its way, it's, it's, um, but we're waiting for more to come. And there are authorized shops that are carrying it. The VI Council and the Arts, they're the ones that are organizing, distributing the fabric. And the authorized shops on St. Croix are EB Store, which is here in Kristenstead, Divi Divi Fabric, also in Kristenstead, and Clara's Party Supplies, which is in Sunny Isles. Um, I called last week and the fabric hadn't arrived yet to the stores, so this, we'll have to keep checking and see when it's available, but it's supposed to be here at some point in time and should be available from those stores. I know all the seamstresses are going to be very excited uh, to have that material in hand and start creating their own um, madras um, inspired fashions. Um, and will that be available also then in your store? Are you going to be creating a specific piece of um, uh, uh, their production there in your showcase? I hope so. I haven't yet, but that is the plan. I have to say, after working on this project for six years and getting it through legislation, having all the town hall meetings, having all these committee meetings, uh, I, I've sort of stuck back a little bit, but my plan is to, to have it as part of my inventory as well and do something special because it's something to celebrate. And it really represents Virgin Islands pride. So whatever product I come up with, like, which I haven't yet, I want it to be something that when people use it or see it, that they feel they feel the special pride that I feel for being a Virgin Islander. Well, we're looking forward to it. Definitely seeing more of it on St. Croix itself. Um, that we can't wait. To, uh, and I'm so glad that you stuck with it because six years is a long time uh, for a project to see from start to end. And I'm sure when you started the initial um, process, you had no idea that it would take so long. Um, but kudos to you for sticking it out and uh, and making sure that it, it came to uh, for tuition there. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And it was a great learning experience. It, it wasn't just a me thing. It was a committee thing. I mean, it was amazing to be working with Bradley Christian and just really embracing our, our culture and hearing so much more about the history of our culture. And, you know, at the town hall meetings, we had historians speak. We had Madras advocates who are using Madras in a new modern way. They, rep they presented at the town hall meetings as well. It was also fascinating. So it was a great process, absolutely. And speaking of process, the, the last part of my presentation, I wanted to talk about my art journey. Um, I, I alluded to it earlier on when I said that I didn't take a straight path to where I am today. And I actually think that's important for, for me because who I am today as a person, as an artist, as a, uh, a businesswoman, all of my past experiences along the way is what I brought to the table today to become what I'm doing, to be doing what I, what I am now. Um, so. I'm going to just, let's see, I'm going to go back to uh, here. All right, so my journey, it's so funny, it's a, it's a hard thing to start off with, like, how, what is my art journey? So I'll talk about my education. My degree, my undergraduate degree is a Bachelor of Arts in Architecture, and I got that from the University of California at Berkeley, that's where I graduated. So I thought I was going to be an architect, and, you know, I've, I've, I've transitioned from architecture, but I will say when I decided to get my degree in architecture, you know, I was 18 years old, applying to colleges, and you're supposed to know what you want to do for the rest of your life at 18, which I think is quite tricky, because you don't even know what, what's out there. And so I chose architecture because I thought, well, you know, it's a smart choice. I love art. And at that time, I didn't think I could make a career as an artist. So I thought, well, I love art, but I'm also very good with math and science. So I combined it all. Architecture seems like a very wise choice. It seems like a very reputable career. And I do enjoy architecture. So that was my studies. Um, but when I started working as an intern, I soon realized that as much as I love architecture and I love the challenges, I love the process, 
it just wasn't the right fit for me because I really want to spend time with design and architecture. It's much more technical. You really have to be concerned about how a building is going to stand up. So you have to really understand how the structures come together and you have to care about what's, you know, what you pres prescribe, you know, like how many screws do you need? What size screws, what size wood? Like all of these things are super important. And for me, I, I like architecture on a more conceptual level. I, I think about architecture as like, how does that building fit into its environment and its surroundings? How do people move through the space? And how does the architectural space speak to you when you move through the space? So that's, that's my interest in architecture. And I realized that I didn't have to be an architect to appreciate that part of architecture. But there was a, a transitional moment. And so when I decided to come out of architecture, um, I decided to go to the University of, of um, UVI, University of the Virgin Islands. And I got my master's in business administration, my MBA. And that was because I thought whatever I end up doing, having a business background will help me. It will give me a sound um, footing to have an understanding of how business works. And so that was actually very useful. And I'm really glad that I did that, even though at the time I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't wanna be a businesswoman. I'm supposed to do something creative, but it all comes together. And I, I rely on those, that experience I had getting my MBA, I still rely on, on that information that I learned. Um, and uh, I also worked as a real estate agent because my mom had a real estate business and I was helping her out while I was work, uh, going to school at UBI. I ended up getting my license. And in that, I met a lot of people. I got to see a lot of buildings. I got to see a lot of decor. And it was a way of just kind of connecting with what was happening on St. Croix and the art world in, in a roundabout way, but it was a helpful um, experience to have. Um, and so with all of that uh, past experience, I still wasn't sure what I really wanted to be doing with my life. And so I reached a point where I was like, I've got to make a big move, a big change, and decided that I would go spend six weeks in Barcelona, Spain. And it sounds a little bit random, but when I went to architecture school, the architecture of Barcelona is something that we studied over and over again. It is incredible. So it had always been on my wish list. So it was a big uh, decision to make for me to go to Barcelona for six weeks. And the idea is that I was going to spread my wings and discover myself more and, and push the envelope, get out of my comfort zone and do something different because I'm, you know, it's a whole different language. I didn't know anybody there, but it was just something I had wanted to do. So I went to Barcelona, Spain, and I absolutely loved it. By the third week that I was there, I, I was already looking for ways to, to come back because I, I felt like I'm connecting to this place. I'm not ready yet to leave this place. So I did come back to St. Croix after six weeks, but I found an art school and the school is called Metafora. Um, and so when I came back to St. Croix, I applied to the art school. It's a one-year program that they offer. And so it was, it's called the International Workshop. And it was, um, it comprises of students from all over the world coming there to do workshops, small little classes that you could just sample different techniques, sample ways of uh, like welding was offered, graffiti, um, developing your own photos, life drawing. So it was just a way to like kind of get your, your feet wet and figure out what you wanted to do. And that was perfect for me. And most importantly, it was um, a place where I got to meet other artists we were kind of in the same boat as I was. So we had a lot of philosophical discussions about art and how art relates to you as a person and how you can make it part of your life. And it, it was so interesting that that one year that I went to Barcelona turned into almost seven years of living in Barcelona. Um, by the second year, I found a studio space in a basement where there were 30 other artists. And that was really cool because whenever you got stuck, you could just walk around and talk to somebody else and that would help you get the ideas going. Um, and then in that studio, I met a woman who had a tour company. And so I ended up working with her and I was a tour guide for our, our, our architecture tour. Gaudi was the architect who was a really crazy, fun architect um, in Barcelona. And so I got to, to, to incorporate my, my love for architecture, but in a teaching way, in, 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 as a tour guide, instead of working as an architect. And so I stayed in Barcelona for almost seven years. And then I got to the point where I felt like I'm really confident with my art. I am, I'm ready now to start my own business. So I came back here in 2014 um, and uh, launched my own textile design business, Debbie Sun Design Studio. And I'll show you. Since then, I have done quite a few projects on island that I'm very excited about. 
This one is the uh, lobby space of the Caraval Hotel. They've done a renovation since then, but when they um, when I first got here, this was one of the big projects that I did. And it was really cool to be doing textile design and seeing it being used and displayed in, in my hometown, where I'm from. It's, it, it's, it's a very exciting journey. I also did huge lampshades at the Buccaneer Hotel at the Terrace Restaurant. And I'm also showing you these images to give you an idea of how textile design could be applied in many different ways. Um, <laughs> the casino in, in Caraval created these metal prints that are custom shaped and I used my artwork for the metal art and they're hung up above the slot machine. And I now have an inventory of lots of different products that I sell, uh, hand fans, pillows, pouches, yoga leggings, tote bags, scarves. The list is endless and the opportunities are even more endless. And this is all my contact information, including the, the, my studies where I went to school. Any questions up, up to this point before I give you the challenge? I am so excited for the challenge. This has been so awesome hearing about your journey. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. And it's so much fun to be able to share my, my, my journey. Oh, and you know, before, I don't know how we are in time, but I, I realized I had actually wanted to make some points, you know, my, as, as far as my art journey, because there were so many lessons I learned along the way that I wanted to just to say a few of them to you guys. Um, one, of the, one of the lessons I learned is that listen to your gut and follow your heart. Even you know, as an artist or whatever field you wanna get into, your heart will tell you what you really wanna do. And then it's worth putting in all your passion and, and making it worthwhile. And it's never too late to change your career. And in fact, because my journey was not a straight line, I'm actually grateful for that. Because over the years, I have accumulated so many varied skills that I know I can land on my feet, no matter what life goes in. You know, by being in real estate, by being an architect inter intern, by I even did graphic design, um, I'm good with website design, all of these skills come together. And so even if you don't quite know where you want to go, all of that kind of becomes who you are as a person. And so I continue to zigzag my way, but I embrace any hurdle. Uh, because each time I come out of it wiser and more skilled and in life, it's more interesting that way as well. And so I encourage all of you um, to pursue your passion, figure out what your passion is and pursue it. And if it doesn't work out, that's okay. That makes you stronger. And then you continue on the journey. So Debbie, one of the questions I had for you was who introduced you to textiles and to silk printing, um, silk painting? So uh, Cindy Nail was my art teacher. She's an artist. Um, she's been on, she's been on island forever. She now um, lives, uh, lives uh, off island, but comes back for like a month every year. Uh, I had her when I went to Good Hope School as a teacher. And then during my transitional phase, when I wasn't sure what I was going to be doing. And before going to Barcelona, I actually interned with her. And that really helped me get excited about arts and get started and making big steps and wanting to like really embrace art as a career path. So that there, yeah, that's Cindy Mail. So Cindy was your inspiration. And then as yeah. just, it uh, sounds like um, at Good Hope Country Day School, were you just one of the students who really enjoyed art and drawing and- um, Yes, I did. Making? Yes. <laughs> and that's the other thing, you know, creative people really have to have an outlet for their creativity. And I was really fortunate that it was encouraged. Um, you know, my parents were very supportive. The school was supportive and, and it's important to be able to use that part of your brain. Um, and then as far as you showed us some beautiful patterns, you know, that was inspired from your um, silk, screen, um, silk screens that you had created there, um, your silk paintings, I should say. Uh, what is your number one selling pattern then um, at your store? Um, so, you know, let me see if I can find it. It is the, um, hmm. I'm not sure. It's called Elemental Flow. I'm going to see if I can figure out what slide it's on. Or better yet, since I'm on camera, I'm just going to bring you. I'm going to grab it. And I gave uh, those of you that are on the Zoom in the chat right now, I did give you guys uh, Debbie Sun's um, um, website so you can go on and see some of her patterns and see some more of her merchandise that she has there too. Along with, I also gave you the name Gotti that she mentioned that was very inspirational to her there in Barcelona. So I hope you Oh, perfect. Some yeah, he's a Catalan afterwards. architect. Uh, um, Catalan architect, Antoni Gaudi. 
uh, he, his, his work is amazing. It's, it's, it's very unusual. He used nature as his inspiration. And I highly recommend taking a look at some of the work that he's done. And what I have on the screen right now are, is the elemental flow design as, uh, on leggings. And this is one of my most popular prints. Awesome, thank you. Ladies that are on, anybody else have a question they wanna send, put a, it in the chat or um, ask before Debbie gives us our art challenge that I know, you, I know everyone's excited to hear what her plan is for us. No. No, okay, all right, Debbie, go ahead and tell us what our creative art challenge that we're gonna be focusing on here for the next week. Um, and I'll give you guys a, the deadline for that um, after she explains. Fantastic. So I'm going to move it over to the slideshow and the textile design challenge. So the task is to create a hand sketched repeat pattern. So many of the things I showed you earlier was digitally, but you can do it by hand. The theme is what you love about the Virgin Islands. And, you know, thinking about the Madras and that process for me was really enlightening. And so what does the Virgin Islands mean to me and what do I love about it? So I thought that would be an interesting theme to explore for you personally. Um, you don't have to go complicated on the design process, but I'm gonna show you how, how to make this work. So on a piece of paper, and if you do a letter size paper, I would make the drawing a little bit smaller than the, than the letter size, uh, but you just do a hand drawing. And then on that piece of paper that you drew on, fold it in half and cut vertically so that you have two equal sides that are the long sides of the paper. And then what you'll do is you'll take those two sides of paper and I'll just maybe so you can see me with my gestures. You take the two sides of paper and you swap them so that the outer edges of the paper now meet in the center. And on the back side of that, you tape it. You following me so far? I'm yes. assuming thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're just taking a simple drawing, you're cutting it half in half vertically, and then you tape it together after you flip the papers. So then the next step is to do it in the, in the other direction. So now the same piece of paper that you've taped vertically, you're now going to cut it in half horizontally. And when you take those two separate parts, you swap them and you tape it. So what will happen is that your images will come off the corners, each of the corners, flow off at each of the corners. So that's what you want to be able to get the basis for a repeat pattern. So what you started with is the image on the left and what you'll end with is the image on the right. Make sense so far? Yes, and I think, uh, Debbie, what I'll ask from you is if I can get these um, individual slides as directions, Absolutely. I'll be able to uh, email it out to um, those of you that are on the Zoom here to ensure that you have the, um, have the directions um, at hand while you're creating. Perfect. So then the next step is once you have all the corners, the edges taken care of, so that's what I have on the left is that image where all the corners are, are, are organized, there's some room in the middle. And you don't have to, but you could add some more artwork. So I added a seahorse in the, in the middle one. And then I added a second seahorse on the, on the right image. And one thing that you need to think about when you add more art onto that piece of paper is you don't wanna go to the edges because you've dealt with the edges already. But whatever space you have within the drawing, you can add more art. You can even overlap it. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, or you can keep it very simple. You don't have to get very complex. The idea of this challenge is to get a concept of how to create a repeat pattern using one of your drawings. And then once you have that piece of paper, that's what you see on the, on the illustration there on the right side, you have the corners addressed, you have added the extra artwork that you wanted to do, you then can make four copies of it. So if you have access to a copy machine, you can actually just view up. And that's why I said, if you're gonna use letter size, just do it a little bit smaller, the drawing. And the reason being is that not all copy machines print all the way to the very edge. So you wanna make sure it fits. Um, but you can also trace it by hand. You don't have to have a copy machine to do this. You could just repeat the same drawing four times. And then what happens when you put those four pieces of paper together, you look on the right, you've created a repeat pattern. 
So that's the challenge. Create that one of a, your own. <laughs> that's going to be a challenge later. Uh, that's going to be a challenge. I, I see that um, most of you, I think, probably at your schools, I'm sure if you go to the office and explain to them what you're working on, they'll be more than happy to help you out to make that extra copy. And of course, if you need to, you can stop by CMC Arts and we will also um, be happy to make that copy for you too. Um, to ensure that you can create this um, beautiful piece of art. And as Debbie said, of course, you guys can always trace and it's always a good rule of thumb. If you got a window at your house, that's an easy way to tape up your piece of artwork and then um, lay another piece of paper on top and you'll be able to trace very easily um, the design over as well too. So yes. uh, anybody on the call, does anybody have any questions about the textile challenge that we're going to be creating here? All right, so I'll get the directions um, from Debbie and make sure that we are able to uh, email that out to you. Um, we are gonna let you guys work on this and that way you can think because I think uh, Debbie definitely explained that these processes aren't quick. You know, People I think oftentimes think in art that it's a quick process, but it's definitely not. It's something you're probably gonna need to sleep on, think about how do you want to show again your love for the VI? And then because this is a multiple steps um, to create your artwork, we're not gonna have this challenge due. I'm gonna give you guys a little extra time. We're gonna put that to a Saturday the 26th. Um, I'm gonna say, if you email that to me by 9 p.m., I'll put my email in the, um, my address uh, when I email it to you guys, your information. I'll put it in the chat as well if you have any questions. Um, and that way we'll get that to Debbie and she'll make her decision. Um, it's a $150 uh, gift certificate that's up for grabs. Um, for the art challenge winner. And I'll definitely um, want to thank C, I definitely want to say thank St. Croy Foundation. Uh, they are the ones who um, through their care grant uh, were able to put this on and help us uh, help CMC Arts host this along with Debbie Sun taking up, uh, giving us her time today to really dive in on this very exciting art career that you know, as a as an art student myself, I always wish my art teachers had given me some more information um, about these great careers that are out there. <laughs> Any other questions on the line right this moment? So again, thank you to Debbie Sun, um, and you can find her um, wonderful artwork again at www.debbysun.com. And thank you, St. Croix Foundation, as well as CMC Arts. And we're looking forward to seeing your work. Me too. Thank you, guys. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>